Hey there, it's Free, and this is how I met my books. So over on my blog, I do this series called How I Met My Book, and I pick a book from my bookshelf that I have like a backstory about how I discovered it, and I just write about that. I decided that for my booktube channel, it didn't really make sense to just do one book and talk about one book's backstory, so I thought that I would choose a bunch of the books that I talked about over on my blog and maybe a couple of other ones and just tell you about the book and tell you about how I ended up reading that book. So the first book that I have here is the first book from The Black Dagger Brotherhood, by J.R. Ward. This is a very popular paranormal romance series about this brotherhood of vampires who are protecting their race from these vampire hunters called lessers. This is a faded mates situation, so it follows each one of the brothers from the brotherhood and their faded mate. I've only read like the first seven-ish books in the series, maybe more, maybe like the first ten books in the series, and then I kind of gave up because there's like a million books in the series. But the first few books that I read I really really enjoyed. I picked this series up because I saw it in a catalog and there's another book that I'm about to talk about in a second that I read which was my first adult paranormal romance and as soon as I read that one I was like I need to read all the adult paranormal romance that I can get my hands on. So I was flipping through a catalog of all things. Like, you know those catalogs that come in the mail around Christmas time? And it's like all the items are super cheap, but then the shipping is a million dollars. So I found this randomly, like in between all like the throw pillows and random as seen on TV things. I saw the series, like the set of the first, I think like six or so books in the series in that catalog. And I randomly ordered this from a catalog. Like who orders from a catalog anymore? <laughs> but that's where I got this book and that's where I got this series and I ended up binging this series like crazy and becoming absolutely obsessed with it and I pass it on to my sister and her and I have reread Z's book like a million and a half times. In fact, it's been a while since I reread it. I may actually do a reread of this series and maybe I'll vlog it. I'm not sure but I just thought that it was hilarious that I bought this series from a catalog. <laughs> so like I said, this was my very first adult novel. I've talked about this before. This was my very first adult paranormal romance novel. It's Jacob. It's from the Nightwalker series by Jacqueline Frank. It's book number one. And the whole reason why I bought this book was because I was in the middle of my Twilight craze, like when I loved Twilight back in the day. And I saw the name Jacob and I was like Team Jacob. And so I saw this at Barnes and Noble and this was, I picked this up before I started reading adult romance. Like I used to go straight to the YA section and only shop the YA section. I think I was like passing by the adult section or something and this book for some reason caught my eye and I just picked it up on a whim and then it sat on my bookshelf for years and I didn't pick it up. And then one day I just on a whim picked it up and I was like, oh my, because it was the first time I ever read like an explicit adult book and it was so good. And to this day, I still say this is one of the best paranormal romances that I've ever read. This whole series is amazing. The spinoff series, the Shadow Dollar series is really good. So this series follows what's called, they're called Nightwalkers. There's demons, there's vampires, there's shifters. And this is another faded mate situation, but the storytelling is really good. The world building's really good. And I loved the characters in this. I'm just obsessed with this series. And this is another one. I think I need to do like a reread of this series and also the Black Dagger Brotherhood. But that is how I found this book. And then we have The Wall of Winnipeg and Me. I've talked about this recently in my Hating Game recommendations video. I picked up this book because I was obsessed with The Hating Game and I am in Sally Thorne's Facebook group. And I'm not really active on Facebook anymore because it gives me anxiety anytime I go on Facebook. But when I was more active on it, I used to go into Sally Thorne's Facebook group all the time just because people would ask for recommendations and there was always a thread going on of people asking for books that were like The Hating Game. And this book came up so many times when people were asking for recommendations. Now that I think back on it, there's not a ton of similarities between this book and The Hating Game. The main thing is that it's a slow burn and that it's kind of enemies to lovers. From Luke Off With Love is much more similar to The Hating Game than I think this book is, but back 
then back when I first discovered Mariana Zapata because this was my very first Mariana Zapata book from Luke Off With Love wasn't out yet but I ended up picking up this book and I was like my world changed like <laughs> because she is now my favorite contemporary romance author of all time it's just like it gives me so many happy memories thinking about how I found this because of The Hating Game because fans of The Hating Game introduced me to Mariana Zapata and Mariana Zapata really introduced me to the world of indie authors which completely opened up a whole new world to me and now some of my favorite authors and most of my favorite books are from indie authors so this next duet is another author that I found who has become one of my favorite authors of all time and that is Trisha Wolf this is the darkly madly duet this series is a extremely taboo extremely forbidden romance between a serial killer and his criminal psychologist and it's very very dark it's messed up the writing is absolutely stunning her writing is oh my gosh I'm obsessed with her writing she's a gorgeous writer she writes serial killers as if she is one the whole reason why I ever picked this series up was because I read a one-star review and it was an extremely well written one-star review the person who wrote the review was like this is not a romance how can you romanticize a serial killer and I remember reading it and I was like, valid points. I need to read that. That sounds awesome. So it just goes to show that as long as you're not berating people for the type of books that they read, like I would never say, oh, don't read this because this is crap. If you read this, you're awful. Like even if I hate a book, there's still a chance that someone might love it. So I still feel like it's important to talk about what the book is about because what you may not like might be something that someone else likes. And that's exactly what happened with this book. I feel like had I not read that one star review, I probably never would would have picked this book up and I wouldn't have found one of my favorite authors. Another one of my favorite contemporary romance authors and one of my favorite contemporary romance series is the Morgan Brothers series by Lauren Rowe. This book is Captain. It's the first book I ever read by Lauren Rowe. I remembered seeing the covers for I think Ball Peen Hammer, which is another book in the series. I was very intrigued by the cover and then I ended up meeting Lauren Rowe at I can't remember if it was Shameless. I think it was Shameless Book Con. And I went to her table with the intention of buying Ball Peen Hammer, but she was all sold out of like all of her books. She was like, but you can enter a raffle and maybe you can win the books. And I was like, okay. And I had every intention of just like buying the books. So I entered the raffle and I ended up winning. So I, she ended up sending me this book and Ball Peen Hammer. And the day that it came in, I had actually come down with the flu and I was like laid out in bed. Like I know a lot of people say when guys get sick, suddenly their world ends and they're like dead to the world. That is not true. <laughs> For my husband like my husband gets sick and he is like dizzy and about to pass out from fever and flu and he will try and go to work me however if I'm just a little bit sick I'm like uh, like I'm dead to the world I'm such a baby when I'm sick so these books came in and I ended up binging this book and ball peen hammer in a day and became absolutely obsessed and ended up buying the rest of the books in the series and now I am obsessed with Lauren Rowe and will read everything that she writes I've read everything that she's written except for maybe like two or three books and I just I love her so this next one was my very first Colleen Hoover book it ends with us and I had not actually heard anything about this book before and whenever this won best romance in Goodreads like the Reader's Choice Awards for Goodreads as the best romance one year and whatever year it won was the year that I picked it up because I remember going and looking at the romance category for the Goodreads Choice Awards and I was like whichever one won best romance I'm gonna read it because I'm probably gonna like it so unlike most people who when a book is super hyped they tend to not want to read it or they tend to be scared to read it because sometimes they don't like it with me if a lot of people like it I usually will end up liking it too so I picked this one up not knowing anything about it I didn't read the synopsis for it I was just like okay well if it won the Reader's Choice Award then obviously I'm gonna like it I'd never read a Colleen Hoover book had no idea clue what to expect. This book 
holy crap if you go into this book blind it like knocked me off my feet i felt like i was in it i felt like i was experiencing what the main character was experiencing it was just super intense and i always whenever i recommend this book i always hesitate to tell people exactly what it's about because I feel like you should go in blind to get the full effect of it. So I'm not really gonna go into it now, just know that there are definite trigger warnings. So if you're triggered by anything, look up the trigger warnings. If you are not, I ha and you haven't read this book yet, I highly recommend going in blind because holy crap, this book knocked me off my feet. So this next book, I feel like most people read because it was super popular, but back when I read it, it was before the third book in the series came out and it was before it became super, super popular and that is Twilight. So I knew nothing about this book when I first picked it up. I think I was in my early 20s when I first read this book and I used to go to Barnes Noble all the time. I lived like five minutes away from a Barnes and Noble. So in the evenings, I would go over there and I would just like wander around Barnes and Noble. I would always pick up like a few books here and there. And I'll never forget, I was walking around and I think I was holding one of those encyclopedia of magical creatures things. And I don't remember why I was buying it. I think I was just intrigued by it. And I was holding that and I was walking around the YA section because I mostly read YA. And one of the guys that worked there, he came up to me and he's like saw the book that I was holding about magical creatures. He was like, hey, you should try out this book because it's about vampires and a lot of people have really been liking it. And previously, I had not known anything about paranormal romances. Like I didn't know paranormal romance was a thing. I only really ever read contemporary romance and I never would have fathomed a vampire romance. And I was like, interesting, vampire romance. But what I thought was funny about this story is that guy who introduced me to this book who worked at Barnes & Noble, he ended up asking me out <laughs> after that and I ended up going out on a date with him. And it's funny because I had been broken up with, who is now my husband, but was my boyfriend at the time, him and I had broken up briefly. So when that guy introduced me to this book and then he asked me out, I went out to the movies with him. I only went out with him once and it, he was like lovely. He was a nice guy and everything, but I was still so caught up obviously with my then boyfriend husband now I was so caught up with him that like I couldn't even give that guy a chance which is very sad because he introduced me to Twilight and introduced me to a whole genre that I ended up becoming completely obsessed with for a very long time and I am still obsessed with but I just thought that story was funny that I ended up dating the guy that introduced me to Twilight. <laughs> so this next book is a book that I feel like not a lot of people talk about but it's super underrated. It is Roar by Cora Carmack. So Cora Carmack usually writes contemporary romance. This is her very first YA fantasy and it is awesome. So I found out about this book because my sister and I went to a polycon and Cora Carmack was there but so was Sarah J Mass, and I was wearing a Sarah J Mass shirt so when we went up to Cora Carmack's line because I wanted to buy one of her books she was just advertising this like I think she had a poster or something for this but the book had not come out yet. She saw my shirt and she's like oh my gosh I love your shirt. She's like by the way I'm writing a book Book that is similar to A Court of Thorns and Roses. It's called Roar and she was telling us about it and my sister and I were like holy crap that sounds amazing. So I had been anticipating the release of this book for a long time and then I finally read this and then also the second book, the third book. I don't know when the third book is coming out but this book was so so good. Such a unique story. This is, like I said, it's a fantasy and the romance is really good in it. There's like a marriage of convenience in it. So in this world, characters can control storms and the heroine, she is supposed to be this extremely powerful stormling and she has no power at all. So to kind of hide that, her mom marries her off to this guy. There's a bit of an adventure story. I don't know. It's just super, super unique and the romance is really strong in this one. I can't wait for the third book. I just love how the reason why I was introduced to this book was because the author saw my shirt and she liked it and she was like, hey, I'm writing a book that's similar to that. So speaking of a court of thorns and roses. So my sister and I are both obsessed with the discovery of witches and we love the audiobook for it because Jennifer Iketa is the audiobook reader and we are obsessed with her. She's our favorite audiobook reader. I don't think she reads audiobooks anymore but at the time she did and her and I 
have listened to the Discovery of Witches series over and over and over again because it's narrated so well and obviously the story is really good. But my sister randomly started looking for books that Jennifer Yuketa had narrated and she came across A Court of Thorns and Roses. And she kept telling me about it because she read this book and then she immediately started listening to A Court of Mist and Fury and it completely blew her off her feet. And I remember her, like I vaguely remember her telling me about it and I feel like she didn't push me hard enough to read this book for how much I loved it. I remember her mentioning it maybe once or twice, which is not nearly enough. Like she should have threatened my life and made me read this. But on a whim one day, I just randomly picked up the audiobook and started listening to it. And I listened to maybe like the first chapter and I was like, this is boring. And I put it down and I stopped listening to it. And then like a year later, I listened to it and I was like, oh my God, I was losing my mind while I was reading this book. And I completely lost my mind when I read A Court of Mist and Fury. I became absolutely obsessed with this series and then ended up reading Throne of Glass and loved that one too, but I just think it's so funny that my sister found this book not because it was popular, but because she liked the audiobook narrator and the fact that it took me so long to pick it up and that I thought it was boring at first when I first picked it up and now it's one of my favorite books. And last but not least is a book that I have actually not read yet, but I just wanted to talk very briefly about it because it has been pretty popular lately and it's funny because I had not heard of this book at all until very recently. It is Dread Nation by Justina Ireland. This book, I don't know, like you, I feel like you can't tell on camera how stunning this book is. So it's, it's one of those matte covers. It's all very dark and then Dread Nation is in gold and it's raised. This is in pristine condition. I saw this just briefly out of the corner of my eye. I saw the spine of it in my library bookstore. And I feel like at my library bookstore, you really have to dig to find good books because mostly it's just a lot of like books in terrible condition, but I have found some gems there. I found a pristine version of Caraval there and I got it for 50 cents. I got this book for 50 cents also. But the reason why I bring up this book is because it was one of those situations where this was like, you could only see the spine. It was mixed in with a bajillion other books, not in any sort of order whatsoever. And I'm walking by and I just like happened to see it out of the corner of my eye and was completely drawn to this book. Like, I'm almost afraid to read it. Like the reason why I haven't read it yet is I'm almost afraid to read it because I'm afraid it's not gonna live up to how drawn I was to it. So I remember I go over to it and I like pull it out and I look at it. It was like, I don't care what this book is about. I need to own it because there's something about this cover that drew me to it. I am very much an advocate of book covers that are very minimal and especially when they're very dark and it almost looks like from far away there's nothing on the cover. I just thought that it was absolutely gorgeous and then there's something about you know the angle of this picture of this girl and I don't know the fact that she's in this uniform and I was just like I have to have this book like I don't even if I never read it I just need this book on my bookshelf because it's so gorgeous. All right guys that's how I met these books. Let me know down below if you have a funny or fun or interesting story about how you met one of your books. And as always, happy reading.